What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Mastered, episode 98. As always, I'm your host, Joe, joined by Charlie. Hey, you're glad to be back. Yeah, you're back from the dead. Actually, we didn't kill you off last week. You didn't. I no. didn't. I actually, no, I listened was, to like the, the amount I have to because yeah. I edited every week. We, we yes. tried. He was he was buried alive, but he meant we didn't pack the dirt tight enough and he was able to <laughs> dig his way out. <laughs> And then there was also something about a uh, a sex dungeon. A sex yeah. dungeon. Okay. Yeah, spring break sex dungeon. That's what oh, it was. I thought the sex pit. The I, sex pit. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was hysterical. Yeah, the sex well, pit. We, and that's why we, I named the episode the, yeah. "Let's Go on Spring Break" because <laughs> let's go. You're just the like, sex oh, pit. well, if that's what spring break is, I should I should go. <laughs> I should go. <laughs> I should go. <laughs> and as always, Tom there on the other end of the table. Oh man, all the birdies got polio from playing too much Switch. You better watch out. A disease that has know. been cured for a very long time. <laughs> no, the birds. The birds. Well, we the, cured the, it for birds the birds, too. the birds. The birds got polio because they played too much Switch. Oh. So you better be well, careful. I Joe. always knew that playing Switch would lead to Dude, bad things. To, yeah. to the resurrection of polio. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this is our weekly video game FDR podcast. Got polio because he played too much Switch. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's true. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? The technology's been around for a while. I haven't done all my research on FDR, <laughs> so you might have me on that one. Uh, this is our weekly video game podcast. The three of us get together, talk about video games, games we like, game news, topics of the weeks. Joe, you have this down pat. You say the same thing at the beginning of every I episode. Know, I now, so, you're good. I feel like you I go home together. and you stand in front of a mirror I feel, and you I feel, I feel so robotic with it. That's why I just... Yeah, I change it up. Maybe say the yeah. date sometime. Yeah. Well, no. Well, we record Today is February 20th, well, but this isn't going is. live till the 22nd. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's always you know, good to have context. Mystery. Like tomorrow, Sony could be like, "We bought Microsoft," and we'll just be like, "Well, this week is this week." I feel like we hear rumors of that. Before <laughs> you know what? You're probably right. Yeah. Well, you never know. <laughs> um, let's start the week off how we always do with what we've been playing. And since Charlie wasn't here last week, yeah. I'm gonna pick you first, Charlie. Okay, big boy, well, uh, a big week. The reason I wasn't here was because I went to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Dude, they, that's fucking awesome. It was. I didn't know that's what you're going to say. That's so fucking cool. Yeah, they you did RHC. I, I just connected the dots. I didn't even realize when I, because I, I only ever glance at your text messages. I never really fully read them. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they played at uh, Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, it's a it's really nice. I've I've never actually seen a concert there or a hockey game. Uh, but yeah, it's a great venue. And uh, man, it was awesome to see those guys. I heard play. they put out, a, they put on a great fucking oh, show. It's so awesome. It's all there. The music is there, and they've got this incredible like light show. So like when you look up above the um, where like the ice rink would be, mm -hmm. they have like this crazy light show where they're like all these uh, cylinders, and they just dip down from the. Uh, I can't remember what that thing is called at the top. It's like it's very it's got like a very four sided specific TV. No, 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 no. It's no? like it's like the thing that they're hanging right on the ceiling. Oh, okay. And it's got a yeah, word I, I can't remember, but like they, they. I know matched, what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They matched like the like the movement of the lights to the music and everything, and it was just a. I I feel like um concerts nowadays. I don't know when the last time you guys went and saw a show, but like years they ago, they just can't. Yeah. There needs to be so much more because the price of tickets are just insane. Is it? Yeah, like I is mean, it, is it bad? So like, I want to go. I've been to a concert in a long time. I want to go see Iron Maiden. They're coming to Prudential, which is is already sold out. Uh, but they're playing two nights in uh, New York, and the tickets are seventy dollars or three hundred and seventy dollars. So, so what's the, about, what right? what difference are we talking here? You're talking about sitting. So like, uh, this is not going to be good for radio. But this is yes. the, this is the stadium, he and then an the three hundred and fifty dollars seats are right here. Here's the stage. And then the seventy dollars seats are, oh okay, right there. So the so it's the, like on the other side of the arena, all the way up at the ceiling. So you're, so you're allowed to enjoy the music at a distance because fuck yeah. you. So like the sound might be better because you're not getting blasted to death. Yes. Um. Also, do you really want to be sitting at, sitting at an Iron Maiden well, concert? So, oh no 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 you don't at all. But actually, uh, for Red Hot Chili Peppers, we were like that close. Oh, okay. and oh they, were, they were they were great tickets, and they weren't they weren't like three hundred dollars, so, but. So my cousin saw them years ago, uh -huh. and I don't remember the exact year, but he went to a show where they, they played completely naked with socks on their on their, their I languses. I have heard of that, and I don't know what year that was, but that, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. They're that, that's they're a weird that kind year. of band. I mean, um, they had clothes on. That's good. Well, no, yeah, so they're improving. It, yeah. <laughs> and it's just so funny because um, they're old. Yeah. They're not too old, but they're old and like- Yeah, they're watching, up there. Watching people, most of them- at least uh, Anthony Kiedis and Flea have 
done like hard drugs like most of their lives. Oh yeah, absolutely. So like I'm watching Flea fling this fucking base around and like hop around like a monkey and I'm like, oh my God, dude, I don't want to watch you have a heart attack. Well, like, that's because of looks, the drugs he's able to jump around and act <laughs> well, like yeah. a monkey. Fair, like <laughs> Kiedis was way worse than Flea was with yeah. that stuff. But still, uh, it's I'm like, don't break a hip, dude. <laughs> uh, but I'm. It's one of those bands I'm glad I was able to see. I'd, you know, I'd uh, I'd read his um scar tissue is his autobiography yeah, years ago. Oh, it's fantastic, great read. Um, if you read the chance, but one of the the most interesting things I found about about that was he lost his virginity at 11 yeah. to his dad's girlfriend. Yeah, that dude has a has had, had a, a crazy fucking life. crazy wow. childhood. Okay, yeah. See, Joe, you uh, you got some shit to do. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're falling behind Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. So uh, that was that Everyone's was great. To a comfortable see. I love yeah. I love live music. Um, so for honor, oh a yeah, game I forgot that you, you I read box this. for honor. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to do the the Jason Vanderberg thing. The, the, guy, the guy who came up on stage yeah. last E3 uh, who okay. was like way in, who's the yeah. lead designer on the game. Actually, He's that like, guy's really cool. Yeah, so I would listen to an interview with him. Before you read this, I was reading an interview where he was talking about like um, basically like the fighting styles in the game and like how yeah. they're all accurate fighting styles because he's a big history dork. So like the knight fighting style where they're holding the blade of the sword, that's like a real dramatic knight fighting style. Yeah, so um, I I can... So let me start off by saying I read box the game. Yeah. It's yeah. really the only practical way for me to play games because I've got so much schoolwork to do and I've just got, um, I'm going to be doing a job and then on other days I've got designated to doing yeah. band shit, like yeah. playing yeah. shows or writing music or and whatever. And we suck up your Monday. Evening, and then so. this is my Monday. So I really don't want to drop $6 on a game that has a lot to do and there's a lot of moving parts. And you're and not 100% sure about it. Exactly. So... Suffice it to say, Redbox is the perfect alternative, and we're not even fucking sponsored by those guys. So whatever. Could um, be. Use your coupon code. <laughs> yeah. Pod them. <laughs> God damn it. And so I sat down. So here's the funny thing. It came out on the 14th, right? Yes. And that was the day of my first exam for one of my classes. Okay, okay. So I'm like, fuck, I need to, like, I didn't know what to do. So I played the tutorial, and I was like, okay, there's some stuff here. And I put it down. Studied, 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 took my test, and I came home and was like, oh, it's done. And I played For Honor for like two or three more hours after that. Okay. And after those two or three hours, I was like, fuck this. I don't, I don't really like this that much. Um, I was playing it at normal. I scrolled through all the difficulties, and, you know, it's like standard normal, yeah. hard, harder, and hardest. And so I found that, like, normal was so easy, it was boring. Okay. Yeah. And so provided, I don't have PS Plus, and I played it on my PlayStation. Okay. And so you couldn't get the online. I yeah. couldn't get online, and I don't know if that's where all of the fun is. That is where all the fun is. That's where all the fun is. Yes. Um. So so let, here's a couple things yeah. though. I found that like it it didn't run smooth. Like it's a it's a whatever thirty. Like it's a definite thirty. I don't know what the resolution is, but I didn't. I felt like that could have been one of those games that would really have benefited from that. And I'm I'm not trying to say like I won't play a game if it's running at thirty, but. It's weird because it's saying. not. It's not like well, yeah, you're a fucking PC snob, um, but it it's it's a slow action game. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. There was something just watching it clunk around that was kind of making me feel a little bored. Like there wasn't. I, I when you're playing with guns and you're running around with guns, there's like an implied energy where it doesn't dip below that, mm -hmm. and it turns out that that energy level is enough to where if the game kind of sucks you're still into it but for honor slow like yeah. it's very slow and the way it compensates for that is that it, it will give you like six different guys to fight so there's three different tiers i think there's maybe four if you include like a boss but there's the peons who you just slaughter them mm -hmm. you just fucking yeah. destroy yeah. that from the yeah the and then there's I don't know if these are the same type of guy or if they're two different ones, but then there's like the guy who you um one on one. You you one on one them, but some of them are really easy and you'll kill them in like a hit or two, and then some of them you actually have to fight. Okay. Like you've got to you've got to pick left, right or up. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the boss who is like he's he's the big dick guy. He's mm -hmm. swinging that fucking thing around and you got to you don't want that thing to touch Yeah, cut face. his dick off. You got to cut you <laughs> yeah. literally have to cut his dick off and I got up to the first one of that and I said, you know, I really don't, I don't think I want to spend my time on this. Yeah. 
Um, so that's not completely representative of this entire game. I did not get to play the multiplayer. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even play that much of the campaign, but from the things I saw in like the cutscenes where there was this really long cutscene in the very beginning, it does have a story. Yeah. To it. I remember and from E3, that was kind of their big push. It's is. kind of cool, but once again, I just I couldn't it those parts of the game, those times in the game, the very beginning elements are like the ones that should be the hook and the coolest. And I just felt like I was being told a history story. Okay. Like a yeah. very like a not cool story. And there's this one really long cutscene in the beginning and there was no music. And it was just this woman monologuing for like About maybe the puddle three, of water. three and a half minutes where it's dead silent. And oh, she's like, sucks. the prisoners of Azkaban have raided the... <laughs> oh, that sounds rad. <laughs> you I know, play this game. But like it's in this very dramatic tone and yeah. it's dead quiet. And the video was JPEG to shit. It was super <laughs> compressed. I couldn't tell if it was streaming it off a server because they didn't want to make me download it. Um... So I'm I'm kind of down on the game. I feel like if I had more time to sit there and I didn't wasn't you know up against the clock to spend another four dollars. Yeah. And provided it is, it would have only totaled out for six bucks for me to play it for two whole days. But I just I wasn't there immediately, and I don't know how long I'm gonna have to be there for it to hook me. Yeah. And that's kind of where I'm drawing the line now with I video games. I think you may have had a more positive experience had you gotten more into the time. multiplayer aspects. Oh, yeah, and that too. Because uh, I had a similar experience playing the beta where like doing the combat tutorials was like, fine, fun. You fight some of the normal grunts. So like, this feels good. But once you get online, it turns into a completely different game where it goes from an action game to somewhat of a fighting game, especially mm -hmm. in the 1v1 dual mode. Uh, the, the standard online mode, I think I spoke about a little bit uh, last week. Yes, the yeah whatever it is, where the 4v4 mode, that's terrible. That is too much of a mess where you kill one guy and you feel great and then three of them team up on you and yeah. fucking murder you. But the 1v1 dual mode plays almost like a fighting game and mm -hmm. it's really cool. Like, there's a lot of depth and strategy. Like, they put fucking care into that game. Yeah. I really admire the... Like, there's a very high level of attention to detail yeah. in terms of, like, accurately representing their styles and their yeah, you know, the yeah. way they swing and stuff. But this is like, it would have been better served as like a fantasy. It is very fantasy, but like if they had leaned on that, because I really, it does have, it has a combo list. Like you can do like R1, yeah. R1, R2, and that's your heavy attack. Yeah. And it like swings into it, but it, it wasn't ever as satisfying as doing that in like Mortal Kombat. And so I'm kind of at the point where I don't know enough about those fighting games and I don't know if this is trying to be one of those fighting games. So I don't know if it's fair to compare the two, but I feel like this game would have been better served if it was a little bit more like that. I, I want to say. Yeah. I feel like that's fair, a fair comparison. No, yeah, that, that's fair. I say if you ever find yourself like with PS plus subscription and you're like, Oh, I'll red box something again. Maybe try the try multiplayer. With, I, yeah. I, I will. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't get to talk about it last week, but I'm, I still want to do Resident Evil, but I just don't. Oh, yeah. The, we all love the shit out of that game, but it was so like, mm, I got that little taste and that was all you needed was that that taste of the of that flavor of horror and great gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't, it, it can't, it's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's like it happened and I've seen so much of it. I've played a lot of it that I don't, I don't, I'm never going to, I'm never going to say, oh yeah, let's go, let's go run through Resident Evil 7 again. You know, so that's, that's why I made sure I got it all out of my system yeah. in a week and a half to two weeks so because of that. It's funny you bring that up because I love that game until you hit the boat. Yeah, yeah. And that's the it, point I hit where my in my second playthrough where I hit the boat and I said, I don't want to play this anymore. The, I feel like the pacing for that part yes. specifically changes. Yeah, because I felt that even, like that was the part in my first playthrough where I was like, oh, I'm not crazy about this. Yeah. Um. But still, like, and it felt so much longer because I thought that was going to be a short segment to a point where I started rushing through it because yeah. I thought it was going to be over quickly. And it, it keeps going through. It, now, granted, on my speed run and hard playthrough, I knew exactly where to go. So yeah. it was over quickly. I mean, the whole it, game's it, over quickly. It's still at that there point. for like longer than it should be, I feel. Yeah. And it's not like it's a terrible sequence, no. but when you compare it to the rest of the game and how the rest of the game flows before that, it just feels 
It was almost like a poor, it, a worse designed it, house. It feels like, kind it, of, yeah, feel it, like it just kills the pacing. It's like a less interesting house. There's I think a part of me that wishes they kind of just went full on Resident Evil One and just had a fucking lab that, underneath. That's or some what shit I was. Like that's that. what that I was cool. about to say. Yeah. I agree. I I wish the full game was the house, and the house was bigger and expanded upon. That's yeah. what I wish. That's almost what I wish the whole game was. Uh, I think uh, that was it for me this week. Um, so I I did want to say though. I don't know if I will be picking up Horizon, though. Oh, really? Mm. Because it is going to be a time sink. Oh. And so I actually might wait until spring break. Okay. When is that? That's in March? At the end of March? Charlie, you think you're so cool being mature and responsible? I just like, I, I, I know. You. So like on this big test, I, I worked my ass off and got an 86. Now provided it's like the best, most satisfied 86. But yeah. that, I took hours to get that kind of grade. So I just... I, I don't want to change. I know the I know the winning formula yeah. for me, and I didn't I didn't play. I was able to play enough video games, but I can't do more than that. And I know if Horizon is as good as it they well, say it saying is, it is, yeah, then I just won't be able to pull myself out of it, or I'll be thinking about it. And it's happened with Netflix show. It happened with Shameless. I got really into Shameless, you know, the month up to this test, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time like watching and thinking about Shameless. Yeah. And as I'm studying, I'm like. Oh my god! I wonder what's gonna happen to Lip. I wonder if fucking Fiona's gonna fuck everything up again. <laughs> uh, so I just, I'm not. I just know. I I've seen it happen, and I know. I think I'm just gonna wait. I'm sure you guys will. I'll hear all about it. No, oh, I'm waiting too. I mean, you know it's, that. Well, though. you're waiting until it comes out on the yeah. Switch, so you might be waiting yeah. a while. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I the only one getting Horizon next week? I th you, oh. Well, I'm not. The jury's not out. <laughs> yeah. So if I am as reliable decided. as I can be, you will be the only one having it. Uh, playing it but if i you know if it's like too good to be true i might end up i might yeah. just end up with it so that's uh that's it for me all right tom what have you been up to uh really i haven't played much uh much new this week um i did boot up final fantasy 15 again i started my new game plus run uh mainly because i hadn't played much of that game on my new television uh but that game running in 1800p it's not full 4k it's 1800p checkerboarded um with HDR on is astonishing looking. Um, so far, like of the HDR enabled games I have played, it's been the best, most obvious case of it that I've seen. Uh, foliage just pops more. The lighting, it does the Witcher 3. It almost makes it so it does the Witcher 3 lighting thing where I wish that game had some HDR support. That would be fucking phenomenal. Be where like the sun just like drenches the environment. Um, everything looks bright. But I feel like that's the way it should look. And then the darks look so much darker. Um, and then when you're riding around in your chocobo and I have a blue chocobo and they have all the different colors, um, th those just pop out more. It's a it's a great looking game, especially in 4K and HDR. I think so far that's the best argument I've seen for HDR support. Like I tried some of the other ones. Ratchet and Clank looks great. Uncharted, it's there, but it's kind of hard to notice. Um, but I feel like Final Fantasy 15 makes the best case I've seen so far. And I heard Horizon also looks incredible. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. that will be the benchmark for that yeah. stuff. Um, I uh, also, while we're on 15, there were, there, they added their official PS4 Pro update. So this game already had 1800p and HDR, but they added a high resolution mode. And in the patch notes, it says, hits up to 60 FPS. I'm like, sure. <laughs> um, so I turned it on I went to the settings turned it into light mode because that's how you access the high resolution mode okay what this really means is they just unlock your frame rate and it fucking judders from 55 <laughs> oh. to 40 frames per oh, second man, and it rough. is the most horrific thing I've ever <laughs> played in my life where the camera's just speeding around but your character's juddering along uh, the ground that's it's nasty terrible like the frame pace in that game is already bad but this just it, amplifies it like way way more as it was even watching the digital foundry um they looked I into it those guys videos. yeah and right now cool the xbox one version is the smoothest version of that game <laughs> because it's the only ver ver version that runs at a um stable 30 frames per second there's something to be said about <laughs> um this lock of a so rock solid immediately i just put that back on to to high mode and i've just been playing with in the 1800p and the with HR, which yeah, it all looks great, so I'm not complaining. That's um, they uh also in that patch they put out. So you know how Hitman had um high value targets or whatever it's called. Oh um, 
Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I know what yeah, you're yeah, about. yeah, yeah. Uh, they the they did like the month, elusive targets. Elusive yeah. targets. They did that for Final Fantasy 15 with, with. They basically added elusive hunts. Okay, where it's like a timed hunt that'll appear in the special missions thing when you hit uh, the start menu. Um, it'll tell you where the monsters are and where to find them, and then it'll show you what rewards you get for killing them. So you have a certain amount of time to fulfill these hunts. And I did the I did the first one they did. The next one is coming, I think, in a few days. Um, and it was you had to fight 100 little cacatars. The, the the little you probably recognize if you've seen anything Final Fantasy. The little cactus people. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking. I about. have no. You have to, I've about. seen pictures of them before. <laughs> you have to fight 100 of them, and they're just uh they're constantly like afflicting, confuse, and poison on your party. It's actually it was a way tougher fight than I thought it was going to be, but the rewards you get for it are great. And they just upped the level cap from 99 to 120. So I feel like I have even more reason to play around. So I have two save files right now. I have my new game plus file that I've been slowly grinding through. And then I have my file of me just in the open world after I beat the core game Okay. last time, uh, which is what I've been do- going around doing a lot of that post game content in and just grinding out levels. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I like that they're, they're continuously supporting that game. I didn't check out the last batch of DLC they put out the chokeable chocobo moogle carnival. Cause like, honestly, who gives a fuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's I, I I really appreciate the way they they continue to just update and support that game because like I like that game a lot and it makes me want to continue playing it because there's always something new to go back to. That's good. Honestly, it's making me really want to play The Witcher Three. <laughs> I won't stop you. Yeah, I mean like that. I'll have to be when I play that game again. That's gonna be way down the line because yeah. that's something I need to just clear it out. It will have everything. to be like during the summer where it's dead. Yeah. Um. And then I also, I, uh, I, I took out the whip laced in glass and I started whipping my back repeatedly again. Jesus. What the hell are you talking about? I started playing Bloodborne again. Oh, okay. He, he now always, it makes he sense. He always goes back to these weird <laughs> sexual fetishes. Of I his. fucking tied both my hands <laughs> to the bed and. And then, and then what? You can't <laughs> do anything. You, you just, you just and fucked yourself. Poured the bleach on my bare chest. But your chest. hands are locked up. I'm gonna at least apply logic to your scenarios. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up right now. Um, Unless so, it's like a timed thing when you've got a button, then yeah. you're like, all right, I gotta get it. I gotta get myself <laughs> chained down. Um, so I, uh, I started playing Bloodborne again. Uh huh. Because I've been really craving, I was, I was talking about this on the stream, I was craving a Souls-like, but I'm not ready to commit or spend the money to dive into Neo right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and I figured it had been a good long while since I beat Bloodborne last. So I tried, first I tried going back to where I was in my New Game Plus run, which was right before the Shadows of Yarnum. Okay. And okay. just, yeah, yeah. it had been so long that I forgot where I was, forgot where I had to go. Oh my God, what what am I expecting? Uh, I keep getting killed by these fucking snakes. <laughs> So God I just said, fuck snakes. it. I start a new character, start a brand new game. Um, it's funny because when I first got into Yarnum after you get out of the sick bay, uh, like it started slowly coming back to me. Um, but I kept getting killed and I kept getting killed. And this is the same evolution I had the first time I played this game. Eventually, I just hit a point where it all came back to me. Yeah, and, then you're just and I just slayer, realized yeah. what I was doing. And I was like, oh, oh, OK. I know exactly what I, what I want to do now. Um, last time I specked out in strength and I was using stuff like the Holy Great Sword. Now I'm using a lot of decks and skill stuff. So I'm using the, uh, the cane whip. I don't remember okay. what it's called. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I'm using that and I'm using a lot more like small weapons and small daggers and pistols as opposed to the big heavy stuff that I usually use. Yeah. Um, I'm also specking out blood tinge a little bit because I really never put anything into that just what to that see what do? it does. I forget. I think it just lets you use certain weapons okay. that have a blood tinge requirement. I remember putting nothing into my arcane, and then when I got those really cool, I can't remember. Oh what they're yeah, called. like the I um, couldn't. I just couldn't use them because I was so late in the game, and it was like a billion souls to like put a level the, into the, it. The arms of a Breedus. Yeah, like you shoot the things. tentacles out. Yeah, I couldn't use them because I never put anything into like into arcane. I think it was that like, you needed to have yeah. it. But uh, now I'm I'm fucking fully back into Bloodborne. I just went to go fight the cleric beast for the first time God. after like exploring that entire area, and I got fucking. I was actually just surprised on level one with so little experience uh, at my belt. I was able to get her like almost all the way down, but then she got me with one really good hit hit there at the end. Uh, so now I just got back into the hunter's dream, and I can go level up. Um, I will never forget playing that for the but first I'm, I'm time. I'm like fully back into it now. Like right now, like when I think about it, that's all I want to go play. It might have been a mistake to start that so close to her, so close to horizon. Probably. But, 
it's probably just a mistake to play that game again. I'm back. I'm, I'm back in. I'm back in Bloodborne. I want. I, I want a Bloodborne too. I could see you jumping into Horizon and being like, just oh yeah, I'll probably do that. I, I took a look at that trophy list. It definitely. It looks like a <laughs> list I want to do. What Horizon? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm hearing it's not. It's not the most difficult one. If you want to, uh, if you want to go for the platinum. Yeah. So, um, this week was weird. I didn't play a lot. Were you done? I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, okay. Uh, but done now. To jump off because I mentioned it on the stream, I just want to mention it here too because I think it's really fascinating. I watched a uh, entire run of Dark Souls three. Um, and I'd never beaten Dark Souls three, so a lot of it was stuff I'd never seen before. It was like a two hour and like forty five minute run, and it was a a uh, no hit run. So he took no damage the entire time. Uh, now, no enemy damage. He was doing fall damage because he had this perk on later that would that would heal him up and st- or make his attack stronger and stuff. So he's fighting bosses with like a sliver of health. Yeah. And just dodging, dodging, dodging. And he's talking to like the chat while he's doing it. He's like, yeah, this is just a practice run. Um, someone said, oh, what if you what if you get hit? He's like, yeah, I'll just start over like oh that. Like that's just, like that's what he does. I'm just like, that's fucking crazy. And so to watch him just, and I didn't plan on watching the whole thing. I was actually going to start yeah. jumping around. And before I know it, it's an hour into it. Yeah. And I'm like, that's how it happens. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, holy shit. And like, even though I know the end result, still seeing him just dodge rolling past those bosses is, is like, it still, still makes your heart go a little faster because <laughs> you don't, you, you just don't know how he's doing it. Um, And it's, it was fun to watch him go from, oh, this is practice mode to, okay, this is the boss I usually get hit on. And then he beats that boss without getting hit. And that realization of, oh shit, I only have two more bosses. I can fucking do this. Yeah. Kind of, and he goes in more into hardcore mode. And he did it. It was fucking awesome to watch. I later found, and this is all on YouTube. I can't remember his name, uh, on his YouTube channel. But um, he did another one of the of the DLC. I watched that. That one was only like twenty minutes. And then he fought the the nameless king, which is the. I mean, uh, I'm like shocked one, that he was able to fight him without getting hit. Yeah, and this is all, by the way, no armor. Like naked level one, <laughs> like running around. I'm like, what is this man doing? Like, it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating to watch someone play that game that knows that game. Uh huh. Because like he'll run into an area and uh, there's his weapons card. There's these items called like alluring skulls, and you yeah. throw them and the enemies get attracted to it. It's probably something like it in Bloodborne. Yeah, there is. Um, and like he'll just like start running yeah, into the, a room. The pungent blood cocktail. Yes, and he'll just he'll he'll run into the room, just chuck it at the one corner, and then the enemies that didn't even like notice him yet just start walking over there. So then he has like a straight line right out of the room. Yeah. It, it, it's, it was really interesting to watch. Those dudes have an understanding of, you know, whatever particular video yeah. game that is insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like when you watch the Mario 64 speed runners, I'm personally not very good at that game, but watching no. these people yeah, me not even have the camera facing the platform they have to land on, but jumping yeah. and yeah. knowing exactly just where like they're going to land. And it's not even like in faith. They're, they yeah. know, they just know, like if I yeah. do these in, like it's they call them inputs like they just think about it like a list like up up a and then hold down forward and well that's how you watch when you watch the blind run speed runs yeah it's just it's, blindfold speed runs it's crazy it's yeah. out of this world so Wait, so when i when i read the list i got really excited for a second because it looked like you had started playing dark souls 3 again no 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 i got no, so yeah. excited yeah no i'm not going for a no hit run i'm not a <laughs> fucking lunatic uh, the game I did start playing this week, besides you know my usual Rocket League, yeah, you're, Hot Wheels, you're a crazy Hot person. Wheels car DLC comes out tomorrow, and I'm buying it because it's a flat top car, which is good for Joe. You got to start streaming that because you are. I'm trying to think of the word. You're a button pusher, and I would love to see you oh, yeah. fucking trolling people because uh, you're an asshole. I don't have the game to back it up. Luckily, my co-op partner does. Well, no, that's the best part yeah. is that you won't. You're and, you're literally a, just a troll. Yeah, no, I am because I would just push people's buttons. That's why we call you Cave yeah. Troll Joe. <laughs> Cave Troll Joe. Um, but I start playing. I played uh, League of Legends this week. Oh, oh God, what the fuck is wrong with you, Joe? Now, so wait, Joe, defend, let him defend no, I, yeah, himself. Yeah, I want to know what prompted you to go down this road. So a few months ago, I played Heroes of the Storm and yeah. I enjoyed it. It's very simplified. The one thing I didn't like about it was that it constantly kept switching up the maps, which meant each map had different rules to winning the game. To oh, how dare they put a variety? <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> but it was just if for a newcomer, it was just it was a little too complicated. Just because it's and granted, it's a very straightforward. So you went to League of Legends after <laughs> yeah, playing right. that was too complicated. <laughs> yeah. So I jump into uh, we we use this. Uh, we don't use Skype. We use this uh, Discord. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm on there and it connects with your Steam and like all your accounts and everything. And I just see 
for my friends playing League of Legends, and which before only two of them were playing. And I'm like, okay, what ha- what happened while I was gone? Why are you guys doing this? And they're like, oh no, they're like Brendan, my friend Brendan was like, yeah, just try it out. I'm like, all right, I'll download it. So I downloaded it and we played like bot games and something about it just was something about the, and I said this with Heroes of the Storm too. I like that gameplay. I don't know why it's very like straight. It's not straightforward actually at all. No, it's yeah, extremely it complicated, but it's, it's like you had the three lanes and I'm not going to explain what League of Legends no, yeah, is. No. Yeah, please don't. But, um, <laughs> it's a MOBA. You have lanes. Yeah, exactly. You fucking kill so creeps. if you know anything, but it's just something satisfying about it. And, uh, I won my first actual online match, which was fun. Yeah. Uh, you know what you, I think that did you, you get? To... Did you get screamed at for not doing it properly? No, because we're playing with an entire team of of uh, five. You, yeah. So oh, it's all okay, people okay. we know. So there is no random person yelling at me. For the only being little the bit I know about that game is is playing it briefly on someone else's computer and just getting screamed at. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think the the reason people love MOBAs is because it's so fucking complicated, and if you get good at a complicated thing. You kind of think you're superior to other yeah. people, and like, I think people just like the gameplay. Yeah, I think no, I think it's, 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 it's probably it's just that simple. It's deeper than that, Tom. It always is. Like I'm planning on when getting home after this. I'm not. I'm gonna have wrestling on in the background, but I'm playing League of Legends when <laughs> I get home. No, 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 no. <laughs> think, think about that sentence. <laughs> You are a terrible person, Joe. You're Joe. a horrible person. Monday Joe, Night Raw. So Ugh. one one year from now, are you gonna come on the show and say? Look, for the past six months, I just I don't play video games anymore. I only play League of Legends. Is that going to be you? No. Are you turned to that hardcore devoted? I only play League person. No, because one, I won't play with random people because I don't want to get yelled at. Uh, I'm not up to. I'm not a good skill level You're not yet. Up to snuff. Um, and also Rocket League is still that game for me. Where I just where that will be always be the game. No, I like play. I like I say only not like oh I play video games on occasion. Like I've been on forums where I've seen people say I only. Yeah, no, play, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play divulge into that, into that category. But I, I think the game's fun. It's a fun game. I'm having fun with it. Oh, you uh, can. This is unfortunately, this is America. And you can make yeah, your you own do decisions. What I want. <laughs> um, yeah. So I thought that was a a weird turn of events that happened this week. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And the last thing I want to talk about because Tom brought it up last week is I saw Lego Batman yesterday. Did you like oh, it? How was that? It was all right. Okay. Oh, boo you! I thought. The original Lego movie is just a far better movie. Um, I, I hold them both to the same standard. I didn't find this one nearly as funny. Uh, this was where in Batman in the original, like you get just the perfect, I felt, amount of that Batman. I don't like that Batman for an entire movie. Like I get it. He he learns, you know, it's a kid's movie. He learns yeah. his life lesson and whatnot. That was the other problem. Like there were some jokes for like Batman fans. But like a lot of it was just, I just felt like it was nonsense. I I don't know. I loved it. Yeah, I, especially just, as someone who likes Batman, like the little references throughout and just wonder it's Batman. But like the fact that they gave Bane the Tom Hardy voice yes, whenever like he that spoke. Was just, that was hysterical that they did. That. Like, I'm not saying there weren't funny moments. Like it's still like, like there's some good moments. Like the, I feel like they, the one scene where they're like, they're like, oh, that weird stage in the sixties and just oh, Adam yeah. was dancing for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, but we talked about it last week, and I was really go- like, really went into this movie with high hopes because I I love the Lego Movie, um, and then seeing this, I was kind of just like, all right, like I saw it with my brother, and he was like, he's like, that might be like my favorite Batman movie. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, doesn't have a lot to compete with in terms yeah, of Batman movies, yeah, exactly. Well, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. I was, yeah, well, I know that joke We're, was specifically centered around what's happening now with okay, Batman. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, no, I was actually, I was really disappointed. I wasn't crazy about it because like. I wasn't crazy about Robin most of the time. I did appreciate the the, the Nightwing reference at one point. Like, even like, you know, uh, Barbara Gordon the whole time. I'm just waiting for her to jump into the bat, the Batwoman suit or Batgirl suit. And um, yeah, it's just, it, I don't know. Maybe it was because I was just expecting. I did find it funny that they were making fun of how bad some of the DC oh, yeah, B- yeah. list villains are. Like Condiment King with he squirts <laughs> mustard and ketchup. Even that um that little Suicide Squad reference yeah. where Croc <laughs> goes to put the bomb. And he just says, "I did something." Yeah, <laughs> or he goes like he's like I have a team full of bad guys. Why would I do that? That sounds <laughs> stupid. And it's just like yeah, yeah, it is. But yeah, no, it just didn't click with me like Lego like Lego movie. Oh, did. I'm I'm in the boat where I hold them to like the same pedigree in my yeah. head. I 
And it may, I told, I said it yeah, last that, week, but that actually made me excited for that fucking Ninjago movie. I have see, no clue what the fuck Ninjago is. And neither do I. And I think maybe that I'll end up enjoying that movie a lot more because I won't have all these expectations yeah. for references I expect to hear and want to hear and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, Lego Batman. Go see it. I mean, it's. I think it's worth it. I think it is funny. Like, you will get enjoyment out of it. But, yeah, I okay. didn't play that much this week. That's why I kind of had a... Charlie, I know I know you've been hounding us to go see Split. I know, Did you just I really want to break see and go see Split? No, I, I haven't I didn't because I don't know. I have two free passes, so I figured I might as well take one of you. I don't know if I want to Not see Split. Not both of you. It looks awesome. I've heard yeah. great things about it. It looks like a really cool movie. I just plan on going to the movies a lot in March. Because there's Logan. Yeah. King Kong. Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. What? And that's it. Yeah, you want to see Beauty and the oh, Beast? Oh yeah, well, one I love great. Emma Watson. Yeah, and uh, I and I really like the animated Beauty and the Beast when I was a kid. I watched it a lot. Okay, explains a lot. So about it's great. Me, probably. <laughs> probably. I connected with the Beast. I was like, yes. I am a monster. <laughs> 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 oh uh, shit! I forgot Kong comes out next month too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. King Kong after a week after uh, Logan. It's gonna be a good month for movies. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's take a little break. We'll be right back with the news and our topic of the week, and then we will wrap up. And then tap up. Yeah. yeah, sex. Hey guys, it's your host, Joe. Thanks for checking out the show this week. If you haven't already, head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. We'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcastingmaster at gmail.com with any comments or questions. We may even discuss your email live on the show. To stay up to date, follow us on Twitter at DMastercast. For our live streams, you can go to twitch.tv slash podcastingmaster. And lastly, our video content can be found at youtube.com slash podcasting mastered show. Now, let's get back to the show. All right, and we are back. We just had a little switch talk off off air. It was fun. I feel like we've been having that since yeah. for the last now how many years? But that was actually, that was a good one, though. It Joe, wasn't, uh, you know. Now let's switch topics. Oh, Jesus. Well, at least you didn't snap. Can you, sweat, can you snap for me? I can't. You no. can't I would snap, snap if I would. I love that. Yeah, you know, no, I said, I told Charlie, like, uh, uh, the next time I'll snap, and he doesn't have to, he can't edit it out. Is, well, if you, the, if you notice, I actually didn't edit it out. Yeah, I know you didn't. I, just to I, keep I informed listen. with me not being there. Um, But is is the week we talk about it. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, by the way, 11 days. <laughs> just wanted to throw that out there for you. Uh, Merry you switch, people. miss. Um, so let's jump into the news. Uh, the first one's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, Insane Trilogy, got a release date. June 30th is coming out. Oh, uh, cool. Remake yeah. of all three original games. Looks really good. I mean, just like... I'm excited for that Saints Row. I'm sorry. What? What did you say was a remake of? I like the, literally The have, first three games, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, oh, Crash... <laughs> I, I, so uh, so I, will ad- I will admit, I was looking at my phone when you yeah. said that, and I thought you said like Saints Row. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Uh, Saints Row and Crash Bandicoot are very similar yes, games, they, obviously. They are. I think they run on the same engine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, here's the thing I have to say about Crash. I'm I'm excited for those remakes. I think it looks pretty. Um, I liked those games a lot when I was a kid. I think the people either playing it for the first time or going back to play them because they have such high uh, like they have such high like memories for or praise of it. Uh, nostalgia wise, I think those people are going to be very disappointed. Well, they are remaking because it from the ground up, so they might have changed that, a lot. The that way it I understand, feels. but Crash Bandicoot was. Not and they were good games, but they were never Mario 64, Banjo Kazooie. No. They were what you settled for because, because you had a PlayStation yeah. and you didn't have an N64. <laughs> like those games are fine. They're fine games. We'll see how they hold up in 2016 with the or 17 with the remake. Um, but I think people are might should be prepared to possibly be a little disappointed. To be like, oh, it's like I remembered it, and then be like, oh, it's like I remembered it. See, I think <laughs> I think they're changing a lot with it though. Just the way they keep talking about it. Uh, there was an interview on the uh, the Game Informer podcast with uh, Vicarious Visions, yeah. the yeah. people who are designing it, uh-huh. and they they were talking about taking that into effect of what a twenty year old game felt like back then. You can't possibly make it now and make well, it feel yeah, like so that. Yeah. Now the first game uh, has full analog control, which the first game you could originally only play using the PlayStation D pad. Jeez. Yeah. So. Be interesting to see how they do. I mean, it's it is the budget price. It's that forty dollar price point, like yeah. Ratchet and Clank was last year. Um, I'm excited for it, but again, like I, I think people should just like settle. Set well, their I've never played them. So prop. set your expectations correctly. I might, I you know, if that goes on Redbox, I might play it that way. Yeah. Um, like I said, that was a short one. Uh, our next story is E uh, three is kind of ramping up, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three things over the past. We didn't talk about this last week, but uh, the public tickets went on sale, 
And uh, surprisingly, they did not sell out. Uh, a friend from work, him and his brother bought one, and yeah. they're right now. They just have to book their flight in their hotel, and then yeah. they're good to go. But they're going. I, I'm like, and I showed him the picture of uh, like the just the cramped, crowded yeah. E3 hall. I'm like, that's where you're going into. Have fun. Yeah, I, I heard. I listened to a lot of people talk about this over the week, yeah. and it just seemed like. Just go to PAX at a certain point because yeah. there's more fan stuff to do there. Mm -hmm. And like even the games that people just want to go to the conferences, right? No, you can't get into it. Yeah, you can't even go to I mean, so. we don't have that's enough on. information to say like how yeah. that's being handled fully yet, but it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to get into the conferences. I, I, and as far as like demo stations set up, like I remember listening to the a lot of E3 podcasts this year, podcasts out of E3, and the general consensus was there is not as much game presence on the floor as there once was. Okay. Now, granted, that might change this year because it's open to the public. Yeah. But still, like, all the new game, like, when they're, like, when they reveal just Halo 6. Sure. That's not going to be playable on the floor. No. That's going to be behind a door. Yeah. That you're not allowed to because you don't have a, a media I branch, would love so. to see the big corporations charge again to, ha to let <laughs> the, those people into their conference. That would be hysterical. Well, they do like Sony does like the fan thing where um they yeah, do the let fans in experience and stuff. Um, they, I mean, they have that for no, no, no. Know, no like I'm saying at E3. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. just saying on like, the on the other side. Yeah. Um. So they let people into the conference, and Microsoft does it too to a smaller point. Granted, they don't charge them for it. Um. But Sony has been. That's why at the Sony conferences you usually hear more wooing and eyeing yeah. because a lot of yeah. the a big part of that crowd is is fans where microsoft usually has a smaller section that's fans i mean i think it was only a matter of time before um before i don't know who the the company that that does e3 i uh the esa, ESA? the esa I, it was only a matter of time before the esa had to do something to fucking like reinvigorate life in d3 because the big draw for e3 for the majority of people is the press conference but the showroom part really is just you know the press and even that part was dying down a little bit mm -hmm. Uh, so I think they had to do this. I think this was a necessary move, but I think people, especially people who have been to a PAX or been to another convention, I think people are going to be a little disappointed at what E3 has to offer unless it's changed up considerably to meet the expectations of 15,000 fans. Yeah. And like I said, the tickets haven't even sold out yet. So that's uh, interesting to see Honestly, where, that, where that goes. The reason like I, I initially suggested it and then like, you know what, never mind, was because the thing I like about E3 isn't has nothing to do with the show floor. The yeah. thing I like about E3 is sitting down here and watching press conferences. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, like, now, and we've got the best view of that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know? And now, honestly, that's getting switched up a little bit. Uh, that was an accident. Uh, <laughs> Bethesda confirmed their conference <laughs> is coming like back switch. soon, June 11th. <laughs> uh, so that's still Sunday night. Um, but Microsoft also announced they're... Their, press conference day and it moved from monday to now sunday do you think this okay. was to maybe battle the public e3 thing no because it has nothing to do the public doesn't open till tuesday oh no you're right yeah you're right. um no i think it was because they're announcing and they basically tease that scorpio is is what they will be talking about um i think really they moved it basically to get that if you notice what the past few e3s uh, especially since the new systems were announced and shown off it's usually Microsoft has a very good press conference and then Sony just blows them out of the water, yeah, just, slaughters them, just slaughters them, blows them out of the water. And I think it's be and by the end of that night, you're talking about Sony. Yep. You're not talking about you're talking about Sony and how bad Ubisoft's was. <laughs> you're not talking about how like that Microsoft had a really good showing. Yeah. Um, and I think they want to kind of have that that day for themselves <laughs> almost where there will be talk about Scorpio. Bethesda thing can go and show off. The new Wolfenstein say, "Hey, it will be running. This is what yeah. it looks like running on Scorpio and shit like that." Um, and then they can maybe partner up with Microsoft, be like, "Oh, we're gonna show one half the demo here. Here's yeah. the full demo yeah. at the Microsoft conference." Yeah, tonight or at eight o'clock, come watch watch our thing there. So yeah. I think that's what it's for. So they have more of a a mind share during E3 week. It's and then Tuesday. I mean, Monday can come, and that's when you have Ubisoft and and Sony, and then because really by the next day, Nintendo goes and does their direct and people talk about Nintendo that day. So I think it's kind of have their own day for each it's, one. It's funny. Well, this is going to be good for us because it makes our day a little shorter. Yes. Um, but it's funny that you bring up Sony because I think Microsoft this year almost should look at what Sony's doing. And of course, they're going to cut out a chunk of time for Scorpio. They have to. 
but should look at what Sony did last year and just have trailer after trailer after trailer of games, of games and like that come out. highly but highly lauded, highly desired games. Because I think they're in a bit of a spot right now where they need to win back some fan support. You know, the scale bound thing hit them hard. Um, God, I forgot. The Xbox that. One selling better than it was now, but you know, people are still a little skeptical on the brand. People I still think of it as the losing system. Yeah, I think they need to really do something to win the public over. And I think if they have what Sony did, which is just a segment of here's a trailer for four or five fucking highly anticipated, highly lauded games, Halo 6, Banjo, whatever. I think that's a good way to win some of the, win some of that base back over who already have this preconceived notion of what Microsoft is and yeah. what the Xbox is. Are we going to uh, specifically talk about the Scorpio? Or if I wanted to bring that up, should I do it like yeah. now? Because I didn't know yeah, if you sure. had that on the yeah, note. No, for it. no, no, no. What's um, up? Well, yeah, like they need to do that. Like yeah. they need to, the support needs to be there for them because... It's just so crazy how uh, when you put the the view, the spin on the Xbox of it as the losing system, it is it just, you can't, it's really tough to do that. But at the same time, I think that a, a, a large portion of your platform is being spent to tell people that they are, they're going to buy the Scorpio and then... Besides just your games looking better, you need to go get the, the TV. And, and like, yeah. I still don't think that's the most consumer facing thing to do. So maybe they need to do maybe the opposite of what Sony did during their PS4 Pro reveal, which was Sony was so focused on showing the benefits of PS4 Pro for HDR, yeah. 4K ready TVs, which you can't get across during a live stream. Uh-huh. I think what Microsoft does, the best way to go about this is... Just say your games are going to be better. Here are those games. Basically, but then show the the differences on what a 1080p user would be doing. Appeal to the wider broad base. Just say, hey, here's... For a quick example, here's Witcher 3 running on Xbox One. Um, here's Witcher 3 running on Scorpio. And then you show the frame rate difference. You say, See, we have so this running at game. lock I 60 still, at... I don't think that's what people really care about i know i know that's what they care about but i think that's the most have, front-facing way to get that to the public i have a problem with microsoft trying to catch up but using cannibalization of their own system as a way to do so like i just i don't feel like unless they come out and they say all right guys it's 2017 scorpio's coming out we're throwing the xbox one in the trash the, uh, this, I just this I, is what I was talking about. They're in a bad spot for this I, this for a Sony thing to happen. To this them. is what I was talking about a few weeks ago, where I think the the Scorpio's, I think the Scorpio is a next gen system. Yeah, I feel Not that way. Saying, as well. I think Not, they don't want to call it a next gen system. But that's the other thing. I don't think because now everything's so backwards compatible, yeah. they're going to spin it in a weird way. Where it's like, oh yeah, you have you have those Xbox One games. They run on Scorpio, yeah. but also Scorpio is this. the The thing that's gonna fucking hold them back and hold them back fucking hard is the fact that last year's message was this is in the Xbox family, and I feel like I feel like if you're targeting that, you can never fully get out of the, what what this exactly. thing is rumored to even be uh-huh. is is a power, a very extremely powerful machine, but you can't have a game fully be optimized for for for, for a Scorpio, Scorpio device, and then and then also be ship a piece of garbage title that yeah, will play exactly. on the Xbox like, One. Exactly. Like me, and like, that's why I'm saying they've got to do the jump. They these have yeah. to be Scorpio games. Like, and like that's what I don't but can can that like here's the thing I wonder though, I don't know like if this. they're in a place to do that right now. I, I think don't know they are though to, because to, to the make Xbox, Scorpio the brand is not game. as strong. No, but to make like Scorpio exclusive games, I like that's basically them putting their flag down and saying whether they want to say it or not, we're starting the next generation. And if you still have however many, many million PS4 users out there who are fully comfortable sticking with their PS4s and that ecosystem and what that system can do, you're not going to suddenly move all those people over to Scorpio because Microsoft said, Hey, we're starting the next generation now. You know what I mean? But, see, yeah, my, but if my, you had, oh. if you had that many less millions of people and you had the stigma of being the losing console, I feel like there are more benefits, and we have the history of Microsoft. Doing I was about that. to say Microsoft, exactly. We I, all know my point last time they Microsoft have no problem appling themselves, yeah. saying like, you know what, no more, no more FireWire. You know what, no more thirty pin. We're, more we're like, we've got the yeah. next thing, and I feel like it's more advantageous to cut the lo- cut the losses of twenty million people as opposed to like thirty or forty at the time, 
it's, that's literally it's, like it's almost funny. Double. What I was just talking about um, did actually happen with the PS2 and Xbox 360, where the PS2 was this fucking powerhouse, this monolithic hundred plus million powerhouse. Xbox was dragging along at like 20 something million units. They decided, fuck it, cut their losses, put out the 360 and people adopted the 360. I don't think that could work in 2017 where consoles are much more of a longer game thing where these well, communities but they're also are not though it's anymore. these it's communities only, are a longer game thing where I don't think people are as ready or willing to jump only, over to a new uh, thing. So I think you're, you're not picking enough. Quick? Can I go okay, in? Yeah, Sorry. It's only a longer game though, because we only had one generation that happened to be the longest yeah. game yeah. we've seen. I don't think that means it's a regular but then, thing, but then you have to think of how many people were were born and then that generation was the first generation they started playing video games. Now they're 10, 13 years old and they're like, oh, the, their new consoles came out and they're playing their new consoles and then a new one comes out. That's going to seem weird to them where it doesn't seem as weird yeah. to us. I don't think your argument doesn't, doesn't hold up. Because everything else around them gets so upgraded like that. Yeah. That same generation grew up in a way where they were getting a new phone every year. And so I think that yeah, but they're not the even going to have to say next generation or anything we have just been trained to know when that new thing comes out, it's the newest version, it's stronger, it's going to use less power, and it's going to cost what yeah, it's going to cost. But, but these kids are already used to that, but so by, I don't think it but matters. But by that logic, the PS4 Pro should have done just fine. That thing doesn't seem to be laying the world on fire. <laughs> well, you know yeah, what I mean? Well, well that's, no, because, really, that's because, and this is where I come in, this is where my main point is, it still uses the PS4 name, where Xbox... Scorpio, Scorpio will not use I, the I, Xbox One name. I don't think if they had put out the PS4 as something like... PS4 Pro that was something that didn't have the PS4 name. I, I still still I don't think, think so it would have been. Well, well, why is the PS4 on, Pro like the end? Like why yeah, is that? that? You you only have one example and like right now that's the most I'm direct thing to compare it to. Yeah, but that's also that's also the first time that ever happened. And this is that's not re, that's not truly indicative of what Microsoft will do. I don't think. Yeah. Because we don't we one we don't know what they'll do, and two I think they've seen that and they know that's not something that works great. I think I think the PS4 Pro had the misfortune of one. I think we we were all here for it. The, the bad press conference. Yeah, it wasn't a good. Presentation. It wasn't a good. It wasn't a good presentation. It had no way to show what 4K HDR could look like. And also, I feel like Sony's main goal with it never seemed to be, oh, this is this is now our next system. Yeah. Where I think Microsoft might be going more into it as this is our next system. I think they're that's, too, that, I think that's yeah. where yeah. the difference for that is where Sony, like, I mean, really you don't see marketing push exclusively for the pro either where you don't, I mean, you'll see it at the end of that where it's the slim and the pro next to each other. But I mean, there's nothing out there that's it's never a better on pro or anything. I mean, sometimes it is. I, I guarantee you probably see it in the, in the white text. But what I'm saying is like next fall, I don't expect to be seeing Xbox one commercials. I expect us to be seeing Xbox commercials. Score, yeah. Or X. Yeah. Even if it's just called fucking Xbox. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know what they'll call it. Obviously, but that would be really cool. If it's I think that that'd be Xbox. the way to do, which is you consider the whole family Xbox. And then these are your individual yeah. devices you, within that family. You have like, you have to cut the one name. I, I the think one name oh, I is agree. so cancerous towards that brand. Yes. Yes. The, the Scorpy one. Yeah. <laughs> Scorpy one. <laughs> yeah. It's just that that's one of the things that definitely needs to go. I feel like this will be a discussion we'll keep having up until E3, yeah. especially as yeah. the rumors and leaks come out. Um, so this is probably only the beginning. This is the, the continuing year of... <laughs> well, no, last what? year was VR. It's, so. it's, it's exciting, though, that E3 is already, like, it's four months away. Yeah. I feel like it just happened. I know. I'm the same way, man. It's still my favorite time of year. Yeah, no, it's fun. Um, let's move into our, our third news story, which I, uh, I, I, I typed in as the, uh, the little switch corner. Um, there was a, there's a few things this week. Uh, obviously the one system got out there, uh, that was stolen and yeah. was given to someone who pre-ordered. Uh, he eventually gave it back. But from that, we found out some, uh, details about the UI. It's very, it's, have, did you guys both watch the video? Yeah, I watched the video. Um, the one thing I liked about it, it was a very clean UI. Very like, minimalist. Yeah, it remind it reminded me a lot of the PlayStation Four, just like the launch lineup of the of the no, Switch. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm talking about like the actual look of it because uh, it's not like the Xbox One where there's like shit all over the place. Yeah, it was nice that it was. It, I mean, it's almost reverse of the PS4 where it had the tiles for your games and then like underneath were like your options instead of on top. So I do. I did. I did like that because we saw it in the in the Switch reveal, so we kind of knew that. Well, Nintendo was has always generally been pretty good with UI. Like even though we and the Wii U had a like solid user interface, it was easy to get to what you need yeah, to get yeah. to. I wasn't crazy about the Wii U. I thought it was too busy with all the little it's people running of, around. Well, 
Okay, I mean, I've in particularly in particular, I uh, I, I thought it was just you know it was so yeah. basic, like you just pass easy. on what yeah. you want. Yeah, like and it was. was like, like, I'm not saying it was complicated. This, I'd, say the, I'd say the but one the, the one bad thing about it was like if you're if your TV is on something else, yeah. You'll only see one of those things, and sometimes it could be all the me is running around. So you push X, and then you. Swap uh, but the out, reason but. I bring that up is because it, the that UI, the Switch UI, looked like uh, an expansion of what Nintendo was doing on the Wii and the Wii U. Yeah. But like a much cleaned up kind it, of adult version of it. It looks a lot like the three, like the yes. DS. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Exactly what I was gonna say. I didn't even think of that. Um. Uh, so other things you found out from this thing is that the actual. Uh, Storage after the UI is installed and everything is twenty five point nine gigabytes. Yeah, well, that's so that's so like normal standard yeah. kind of kind of thing with like your thirty two gig iPhone is like twenty. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then if you're really that hacked for space, go spend sixty up sixty bucks and buy two hundred gig, you know, fucking SD card and pop um, it in there. Yeah. So we'll get to that. So the eShop purchases and this is something Nintendo should have been doing for years, but haven't is actually now linked to your account. Oh, yeah, really? Not your system. Yeah. It's linked. I didn't, I maybe, it's, maybe I missed that it's part. It's broken down that it's actually linked to your account. So, so my game, so <clears throat> when I get a switch or whenever Joe, whoever gets a switch, yeah. if I was to theoretically buy legend of Zelda breath of the wild digitally, then if I got a second switch for, or upgraded or upgraded switch in like three years, my account would just carry over, not. I wonder. I would have to do I, like a data transfer. I, yeah, or I would hope like that, that. I would hope that includes a virtual console yeah. like NES. No, Super every, it's supposed to be all, per, all purchases. Thank from the God, eShop. it's yeah. about that time. Was horrific yeah. on the Wii U. And, yeah, in 3ds, it was a big it, problem. Like, 3DS like you would wonder, so like 3ds's. Like, yeah. why if I bought uh, an NES game on my Wii U, it wouldn't just be available on my yeah. 3ds? Yeah. That stuff is is terrible. Um, and then some download sizes were revealed for digital purchasers. Uh, obviously, we knew Zelda was 13.4 gigabytes. Uh, most games are under 10, yep. which seem to be kind of kind like... Kind of have to be. Yeah. I mean, Mario Kart 8 is like 8 seven, gigs, Yeah, it's seven, like on, it's 7 on Switch. Um, so one thing they did was uh, Dragon Quest Heroes, though, is 32 gigabytes. Uh, now, Dragon Quest game. Heroes is 1 and 2, so it is two games in there. Um, but the thing is, that's the one that if you're going digital, that will take up all of your space. It should go without saying. It will exceed your space, so you will need expandable it, it storage. It should go without saying that if you're buying a Switch, fucking buy a bigger SD card. Yeah, like, unless you're th- buying physical. If you're buying physical, then it's unnecessary because you don't install the games like you do on the oh, new yeah, system. Yeah. So um, I know for right now I'm staying physical just because on launch day I don't want to have to deal with waiting for something to download. Yeah. Uh, so like Legend of Zelda, I won't have 13 gigabytes taken away. I'll have a few megabytes for the save or whatever. Which even then I think the save is on the cartridge. So I don't know. Those right, car- those uh, those cartridges are they're tiny. Yeah, they're they very are. tiny. Um. So right now, yeah. So that's like storage. If you want, there's there's a list of a few of the launch games and and a few of the games coming after that of what their sizes are. But like yeah. I said, most of them are under 10. So unless you're planning on buying like all five games <laughs> then maybe buy expandable it, storage bitch. but Say i'm it. a i'm a big fan of the um the switch boxes uh the game boxes they, they remind me of psp boxes yeah they do yeah i mean with a with a handheld thing like that i would always i would 100 percent go, go digital, digital because yes. i don't yeah. fucking want to be bothered by cards yeah exactly it's 2017 <laughs> god damn it <laughs> um then just for people so they know uh previews for this thing is going to start going up on the 23rd so a day after this air this goes up and uh, reviews are going to start hitting on March 1st. Okay. So system reviews, game Setting. reviews. So uh, I'm excited time. to read those reviews. Yeah. Um, and then finally, our last story, which kind of leads into our topic of the week. Uh, Todd Howard was in an interview. And he said Bethesda has two huge games coming. Uh, the two games bigger than they've ever made before, but they are very traditional Bethesda games. And one, and they are working on a third game, which is a mobile game. So a lot of people are assuming that's maybe like the mobile game is probably like an Elder Scrolls tie-in to their next Elder Scrolls game, kind of like Fallout Shelter to yeah yeah to but Fallout I mean, Four. They already have the um the card game coming out, right? Legends. Yeah, but I mean something else, like not not the card game. Yeah, like yeah. Something more more on the line of what uh. God, what, uh, what did I say? I don't know. I mean, but remember, uh, we talked about this a few a yeah. few months ago. There was rumors that they were working on three projects. Now we know one's a mobile game. Got to assume one is an Elder Scrolls game. And then that other one, they've kind of been teasing that it is a new IP. So it'll be interesting That's to see awesome. if you guys assume Elder Scrolls is next. Yeah. Like, like hands down. I think that has to be next just uh, based on how oh, huge yeah, Skyrim yeah. was for them. Um, I think even. Uh, what's his name? Um, Todd Howard. No, not Todd Howard. The guy Pete Hines. Pete Hines was doing an interview with kind of funny. And even he said like. Uh, 
Skyrim just continue is still one of those games that just continues to sell year after year, uh-huh. even now being going on six years soon after after it releases. So you got to assume that that's their next main push to get that game out. there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would hope that their new game. Obviously, I love Elder Scrolls, love Fallout. Um, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to play that because I love Bethesda style RPGs. I almost hope their new IP isn't a Bethesda style RPG, if that makes any sense. I would like, like to an would, RPG or, or, or something just else. something else. I would like to see that. I would like to see that studio, uh, like extend their creative legs in a completely unexpected and weird direction in the same way that creative assembly did with fucking alien isolation or something like that. Just go out, out on a whim into a genre that's maybe a little unknown for them. Something that they're not typically comfortable with instead of just getting, Oh, another Bethesda game, which I love Bethesda games, but I want Elder Scrolls 6 to be that, oh, another Bethesda game. I'd want a new IP from them. I'd want that to be something completely different, something that breaks the norms of what Fallout and Elder Scrolls are, so what we expect from that studio. I feel like the big Bethesda uh, uh, IP, like, implies franchise, like a long-lasting sort of thing that spans multiple types of yeah. apparel and shit like that. So I'm curious to see if it is something like that or maybe like a one-off. Okay. Or yeah. an- another example is the way we just saw um, Gorilla Games, a studio known for making first-person shooters, for making Killzone, go out and make an open-world RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be cool if Bethesda did the opposite in this Made case. a shooter? Not a shooter, but just did something completely just <laughs> added. person action yeah. or something, something to switch out of their comfort zone. Logical horror, maybe involving <laughs> aliens. Who knows? <laughs> it could, it could. I think it'd be interesting because now that we have, uh, what was it? What EA studio were we talking about that's doing a, a Bioware? We're talking yeah. up uh, their new IP and the idea of shared world and destiny like. It seems like that's going to be a new thing that studios are chasing. So it could be that that new Bethesda game is something shared world, something destiny like. Two Worlds 3. That that is Damn. real. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, really? really? That just got announced. I was making a joke. Two worlds. <laughs> stop! Stop! Hold the presses. <laughs> Two worlds. Three is coming out. What a fuck of a name. Contact all four people. <laughs> Let them know. All four people that bought Two Worlds Two. God, those games are fucking trash. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I bought that first game years ago. Like when I, I was super when into you didn't know when I was super into Oblivion. I'm like, oh, another game like Oblivion. Oh my it was god, just it was fucking it, it, a dumpster it was announced fire. March of last year. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I was swear to God, I was just making <laughs> this a joke. game's developed to be uh, oh, so over three years. So, uh, so March of 2016 to March of 2019 <laughs> is when oh. we should get this game. <laughs> Holy shit, you weren't kidding! Wow, <laughs> God, weren't those games supposed to be trash? I thought, yes, yeah. So, I was just saying they're real oh, bad. Man. Don't play those That's games. That's why it was a joke, yeah. <laughs> oh man, wow, what a. What a what a what a fucking realization there! How did we miss that one on the on the notes? I know of all the highly anticipated <laughs> games we discussed, <laughs> up how could the, we miss Two Worlds Three? Up there with the likes of the Nintendo Switch and oh, Horizon. Man. Now, speaking of Horizon, Horizon's coming out next week. We got Zelda a few days. At, wait, is it next week? Yes, it's the twenty eighth. Yeah, it's the twentieth today. Oh It'll God, be about eight yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Approximately. All right. So from when we're recording, yeah, eight days. We have Horizon. We got Zelda coming out that week. Which, uh, later that week, which is you know open world. I want to talk about open world games because they're an odd genre for me personally. And I know it seems like that's for a few years. It seemed to be like every game had open world aspects to it. I still feel like we have a lot of that. I think we do, but I also feel like we're getting away from that now and we're going to every game has a sustainable multiplayer service. Yeah. And I feel like that's always been a thing, but so I wanted to kind of, kind of ask you like questions, like, you know, this is an interview now. Okay. Hey, Charlie. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Wash your hands. Yeah, Superman does good. You're doing well. <laughs> uh, I am Superman. Oh, well then, I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. So, I want to wonder, like, what makes open world games, like, fun for you? Like, what makes them interesting? Like, what kind of gets you into them? What takes you out of them? Like, when does stuff go from being fun to being tedious? And, like, what are, like, what are the games that you feel that do open worlds right? And what are kind of ones that kind of... They have open worlds, but yeah. you play the game and you go, "Why is this an open world?" Okay, so that's a that's a good question, Joe. Well thought out. I bet that <laughs> took you a couple days to come up. No, um, so like twelve hours. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. <laughs> so 
there are the classics. There are the Oblivion open worlds. There are the Ubisoft open worlds, mm-hmm. which barred from Assassin's Creed 1, 2, Brotherhood, the rest are trash. I don't, I don't like that style of gameplay because it is too formulaic. Yeah. So I think a lot you, of people you try you. to make, you try to convince people, right? The best open world game is one where the developer convinces you that you have as much freedom as you want, but really it's formula structure and it's very deceiving. And I, I, that can be good up to a point, right? It's only as good as the story you're telling in that world, the way you get around that world and the way the world looks. And so sometimes they just have the right combination or sometimes Ubisoft just doesn't even give a fuck and it's just what it is. Yeah. But I, I can't do that any, like, I don't like to do that anymore. I, I feel like I burnt myself out of it, like almost permanently when Skyrim came out in 2011. Um, so I like survival games Mm -hmm. and I think that Mm -hmm. I, I really like that aspect on an open world, whereas you would have objectives and places you need to go in a survival game. You just go and you just keep yourself alive. And like, like that kind of game is fun. Yeah. And I think that is like, has become my favorite type of open world where, I need to use the environment in a way you don't in traditional open worlds. And and in those, you always do. You're always picking stuff off, off leaves and like, mm-hmm. you know, to make stuff. But where that kind of aspect is the game. And I feel like maybe some people think of that as like a cop out for just not designing a game. But it, it can be fun if it's done well, if the systems are right and they're interesting. Yeah. And I, I think that might have answered some part of your question. I, um, But that to me, that that's kind of... What has been catching my eye in an open world game? I I feel that the best open worlds are games that can justify their open world. Ubisoft's problem is a lot of the times you have your open world, you have your checklist of things to do, objectives on the map, and you don't feel like you're exploring more so that you're running from objective to objective to objective so you can cross off the list. It doesn't feel like there's a purpose to you exploring. There's a purpose to open the world except traveling from A to B to get from objective to objective. I think good open worlds give you a reason to explore that world. It gives you a reason to say, what if I shut my mini map off? What if I shut my HUD off and I just went in a direction? And I think that's what, say we will, say what you will about Bethesda games. I think that's what those games are very good at uh-huh. no, is yeah. that you are constantly finding new, interesting things in this world. It does it doesn't just feel like you're going to find towers or well, that's to go why I here. definitely differentiated between yeah, those yeah. two things. To go here or to find a certain type of mission. It feels like you are exploring. You are on an adventure. Um, you don't know what's going to be around the next corner. Oh, you found a cave. You don't know where that cave goes to. You go in and explore that. And I also thought The Witcher was very successful with this as well, where there were towns, like interesting towns with like, lots of people and monster caves and little hidden things everywhere to find. Like that was another open world that felt justified in having an open world. Um, I also really like um, not open worlds per se, but open area games. So a dark souls type game, a bloodborne or a tomb Raider, the new tomb Raider games, Mm -hmm. games that feature wide open areas or play spaces or levels to explore, but still funnel you in a general direction so that you do feel like you have a purpose, but then you also have the time to take a break and go collect some point in the shit if you really want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- I also really enjoy those. I think open worlds, like I said, are done poorly when it is just a Watch Dogs one or a typical you know Ubisoft style open world uh, where, and this is why I fear about. Um, looking at ghost something like uh, ghost recon wildlands they just give you the open world to put on the box they say they have an open world but really it's just the space in between you going from objective yeah. to objective you don't, there's no real purpose to explore. where there would have been like loading times or something it's yeah. kind of just all there, there now. there's no real purpose to explore that environment mm-hmm. um uh, another just company i want to give props to for creating compelling open worlds is gta for similar reasons that bethesda is good with it where they, the, the worlds they create are just littered with interesting things to find and do. Yeah, for me, like the most recent bad example is Mafia 3. I think that open world was completely unnecessary, especially as you start playing it and 
none of the side objectives are fun. They're not interesting. They're just there to move forward this weird relationship you make with characters, but you only can focus on one character really because then the other ones are going to get mad if you start splitting everything. And then the guy that you've been good to the whole game, you give him one, you give someone else one, then he gets all mad. Like it's very like unnecessary open world thing where that game would have been much better structured as levels. Yeah. Like telling this, telling this really deep and interesting story and then just going from level to level. I feel like that would have helped Mafia three a lot, but because of the history of that franchise, it needed to be open world. And I feel like that's where, that's, for me, like that's a recent. That's the most recent bad. That's example actually almost the it. same exact grip I've had with uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, where I yeah, felt that, that game no didn't need to be an open world. It would have done fine as just levels. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's weird because open worlds. Like I've started to lose interest in them. Uh, I know you guys keep talking about the Ubisoft stuff. For some reason, the Far Cry ones still grab me. Where I just enjoy. I think that's more because of the gameplay, though. I just, I just like, I like the feel of running around those worlds. So, those are for me a little different but most of the time like i see an open world and i just get kind of exhausted yeah it's one of the reasons why like when i start up witcher 3 and i just see oh yeah i should have said witcher 3 was the last giant one yeah yeah, yeah. uh when i see witcher 3 and i just see everything on the map it's just like i feel like there's just too much and like that and like that's my problem with open worlds and that sounds like a weird problem where i'm paying 60 dollars for this game and oh it has too much for me to do yeah right and i know that sounds like a, a really bad complaint but for me it's just like I'm one of those people. I see everything. I wanted. I want to go to. I want to explore. And it's hard for me to turn that off in my brain to go. No, just let's just go to the next story quest. Let's just focus on this side quest. And I don't mean just a shit on The Witcher Three because I re- I really no, don't mean to. Yeah. I, I it's just that one aspect like of open world games in general. Yeah. And that's the last one that I remember jumping into and trying. Even something like Watch Dogs Two, which I'm which I was having really a lot of fun playing. It's just. Well, here's here's three side quests over here. There's the main story over here. There's these things you can do over here. Just like, all right, okay. Like, I I kind of wish. Why aren't there towers? So I wouldn't know this shit was over here. I, almost like that kind actually, of. Actually, it's funny you bring that up. So I tried the Watch Dogs to demo. Okay. So they gave you three hours to play the game. Okay. So did the first mission. Yeah, yeah. Already like started mission. cringing very hard. Yeah. I know people said it wasn't that bad, but yeah, it's I, not bad at all. Maybe I need to play more. Yeah. I don't know. Ran around San Francisco, which I didn't find the open... I mean, it looks nice. It looks fine. Yeah. I didn't find the open world very compelling at all. I kind of ignored a lot of side missions. Running up the sidewalk, and some naked-ass lady just walks by me. And I'm like, how the fuck is this in that game? Is, <laughs> is this is this in this game? But that's besides the point. Um, I just didn't feel compelled by Watch Dogs 2's open world at all. Yeah, and like, I mean... And it was the same problem I had with the first game. Well, yeah, I think the first one is way worse, but... Uh, I think the first one is just a bad game. The first one <laughs> is a bad game. Um, yeah, where Watch Dogs, I, I mean, there's a problem with open world games. Like when you start open world, you can't move away from open world. Yeah, yeah. Like once you once you open that box, you're getting well, kind of stuck in that box. That's exactly what I said at the beginning of the and like when I said I'm not going to get Horizon because I want I need to be in there. Yeah. All the time. You know, it's funny. That's the exact same problem I had with um the evolution of the Batman Arkham series. Yeah. Each I one think got a little more each open. one got a little more open till they finally decided they had to do completely open Gotham City. And that took away something from the series, I felt, where yeah. I, I do feel Asylum is the strongest because you are, you know, like in a contained environment and City was great too, but or Knight felt like it was too much. It was Knight felt like it was suffering from Ubisoft syndrome where the map was just littered with yeah. shit to do and you didn't really want to do a lot of it. Yeah. Um we actually got a response from a listener who uh I posted on Twitter. This is, this is going to be our topic of the week, and he put a lot of a lot of different examples for what he likes, what he doesn't like. Uh, so I'll just start reading. Um, oh, okay. Why did it move? Uh, so he goes like favorites so far, like GTA Online, Red Dead Redemption, the Forza Horizon series uh, are good examples of open worlds. Other things he mentions are likes of Assassin's Creed, Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout Four, uh, Far Cry Two, and uh, just recently Just Cause Three, which came out late last year, or was that no twenty fifteen? Um. He actually says worse was Witcher three, uh, open world exhaustion from that kind of basically what I was saying. I yeah, that's yeah. not that's funny. Cause that's like, like the only kind of thing I would let go because yeah. it was huge and there was a lot. I feel like I feel like me and you were like different from a lot of things I've been hearing about that. Where like I felt that that world could have used gave more? you no <laughs> gave you enough worth exploring that I didn't feel like 
I didn't feel like I was being artificially forced from point to point. I felt like there was a lot worthwhile to find and explore in that game. My thing with The Witcher 3 is that I loved every minute of being in that world. And there wasn't one time where I was like, oh, this is here so that they say that they have this number amount of side quests. Like every part of that game was supposed to be there. And had the yeah. most attention paid to even, it that even, it deserved. Even the side quests, like there was no, I didn't, there were very few side quests in the game that felt like they didn't have a strong purpose behind them. Yeah. Like every side quest had a good plot to it, had a good story, exactly. had good writing. And yeah. They and were all worth like investigating into. Everything felt like it would have been something I read in one of the books. Yeah. Uh, which was like, which was an even better part. And I think not like GTA doesn't have a book, you know, like. Mm-hmm. They just not have yet. what it is. Well, yeah. <laughs> not yet. But um, they just did so many things right with that game. Yeah. To the point where I wanted to be there. Like, I wanted to be at every corner of the world. Yeah. And then the last thing he says is, uh, once he's looking forward to coming out is Ghost Recon Wildlands, uh, if it doesn't suck. Which I, is, okay, good. Yeah, he said that. Say. And he goes, Red Dead Redemption 2, which absolutely must not suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, I, I think you're pretty safe with Red Dead. Yeah, at least Red being, Dead. Wildlands, being, we don't know. At the very um, least, a good video game. Yeah, Ghost so, Recon, on the other hand, I've been um, hearing from people who've played the beta that it's not that great. Yeah, I know there's an open beta in a week don't or seem so. to be super high on it. Uh, just to be clear, he was at Ace Sands Eats. Okay. So, um, thank you for your thank you. your time. Yeah. We do appreciate it. But I just had this feeling cuz we have Horizon coming out next week and everyone's, you know, everyone's praising it right now. Obviously, we don't we don't have our hands on it, so we can't speak for it. But then like just a few days later we have uh Breath of the Wild coming out, which is also an open world game. Yeah. But it's also that weird situation where and I've heard people start bringing this up, and it's a very fair point. It's Zelda is getting praised for things that it's doing that other games started doing five, six years ago. Well, yeah, but because this is now Zelda. It seems to be it seems to be getting a pass for certain yes. things. Yes, I mean, there's well, that's no, Nintendo there, in yeah. a in a nutshell. Here's the thing: there's no other way to say it. Like you can't justify it other than yes, Nint- Zelda is getting a pass for things because I think people wanted to see modern gameplay enhancements that have been made over the past like yeah. five, six years Yeah, added to Zelda for such a long time that I think people are just happy to have them in there. Exactly. And of course, you know, their implementation will wait to see how that game comes out. I think personally that game's probably going to be pretty all right. Yeah, no, um, I, I believe it will be good too. Uh, just- you know, but like, I think people are giving Zelda a pass because, and myself included, we're just happy to see those modernized mechanics stuff you've always wanted to be in a Zelda game in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not... My my problem with it would be if people were saying that Nintendo just did those things and without the recognition that we have been doing these things forever. Yeah, exactly. That's when it would be a problem. But it it seems like everybody's aware like Nintendo is finally doing these things, not that they... Oh, Nintendo's doing these things. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I I, I know what you mean. I'm saying. Um... Yeah, no, because that's that's the part that I'm going to be interested to see. Like, I would love to see someone who just reviewed Horizon also be the person to review Zelda. Yeah, that would because be because I would like to see like what that. That sounds exhausting. Well, yeah, yeah. but I mean that's what they do. But it's so. their job, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Um, they're playing video games for a living. They're fucking playing video games. <laughs> so I would love to see that just to see like how different it is because from like things they've said like in Zelda specifically, there's like oh, there's a lot we haven't shown you because we've really always seen these areas, but then you also have most modern games are like you look at an open world and it's fucking filled with shit to do. Yeah. And just like looking at Zelda, sometimes they like show some areas and it's like, all right, well there's that over there and then there's that over there, but it's nothing like, in between what's in between. Yeah. Like, and, that, and that's the, the shit field. that really matters. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how those, I mean, obviously we know how horizons, how horizons doing. It'll be interesting to see how Zelda's received right after horizon. And then really just see like, cause I, I kind of like what Tom brought up. I, I'm starting to enjoy more of the open area Rather than the open world, I think the new God of War is going for a similar. Yeah, they've talked about two similar Raider approach. Games. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I'm excited for. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, not as excited for open world games as I used to be. Yeah, I used to love them because it's like, oh, I'm getting more value. Well, it was but exciting. Now- I remember fucking playing GTA three for the first time and being fucking just astonished that I was in an environment that I could go anywhere I wanted in. Yeah. And then, I think that novelty quickly faded. Yeah, with then like fit, saturation. Seventeen years later, you're like, oh, yeah, cool. I can, okay, go, cool. I can, I can another, go to those mountains. Another I guess. Open world game. Whoa. <laughs> you remember when that could be a selling point? Like, you see that mountain? 
You, you can, can go, go there. there. If you say that now, you're full of shit. Yeah. Do you ever see the Destiny, the old interviews where they're in old Russia? And this is like during the first, like the E3 2013 demo. Yeah. They're in old Russia and they're looking over at the mountain range out of the playable area. If you play Destiny, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. We'll like restart the game. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, you can go to those mountain ranges. <laughs> Man, they had such higher hopes for that game. I'm that like, yeah, sure to, you can. Realization. Uh, let's wrap up episode 98. We'll be back next week with episode 99. But we will back not have Horizon still. Damn, still those well. reviews hit early. Fuck. Yeah, right. Was, that's not good. That's when not, did that happen? When was the last time a game Sony's went to, Sony usually does. Yeah, They're pretty good with To be fair, that. this game seems to be getting some pretty yeah. good reviews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any does. game with high confidence, Sony usually will ship out early. And if they don't have high confidence, they'll pretend it, it's dead and never existed. It was back in 99, watching movies all the time. All right, I went so, away. All right, well, let's wrap this up. <laughs> For do my first uh, crime. Just, just a few things. Um, every Monday before we record, uh, around 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, we we stream it live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash podcasting mastered. Uh, for some reason, if you enjoy uh, going to YouTube to listen to this stuff, uh, one dude that's been commenting every week, sorry, I missed the notifications. Re- I do apologize about that. But YouTube.com slash Podcasting Mastered Show if you want the... It's not a video. It's just the audio kind of put with our logo. So don't get hope you know, expectations too high uh please subscribe and rate the podcast if you do like it and uh t- you can tweet us at the mastercast uh trying to get more active on twitter um love to hear back from you guys and thank you guys for anyone who responded to the open world stuff yes thank um, you and polls and anything yeah so uh we'll be back next week episode 99 on, the, on the eve of horizon and switch so close we can oh, oh, taste God. it oh. <laughs> goodbye